As teacher trainers at Bristol University's Graduate School of Education, Malcolm Reed and Sasha Matthewman have observed many lessons, and today they're bringing their analytical eye to a mixed ability yeah, year nine lesson like at Hayden School, taught by head of science Dave Dennis. And we've been studying a topic called healthy eating, and today's lesson is the first of two lessons on fast food. Central to their analysis is their consideration of how to balance the necessity of scientific precision with pupil engagement to the fun of the process. It's the idea of accuracy. Do you see what I mean? I agree with the idea of accuracy. The full lesson, along with Dave's lesson plans, can be viewed as part of the Uncut Classroom series. Straight into asking a question, getting some feedback. And Dave's reaction to and, and Sasha Harley's and Malcolm's comments are posted on this programme's webpage. Right, today's lesson is about fast food, OK? And what we're going to do is we're going to do some tests on some foods and we're going to think about, is fast food any good? And we're going to think about the difference between something called a qualitative and a quantitative test. Should we pause there? OK, so how is he setting up the objectives for the lesson here? I'm always interested in what a teacher puts first. So Sir mm -hmm. is telling them that this lesson is about whether fast food is any good. And now he's built it into this notion of a qualitative and a quantitative test. For starters, Dave has chosen a newspaper article. Play fastest finger first, OK? So this is a um, routine, isn't it? We're going to play fastest finger first. He's got games that he plays that they're linked to learning. Obesity, OK? Obesity. Right. What are the 16th and the 17th words on the right, top? So this line? is a key word um, exercise, isn't it? This is another way of raising the key terms that he wants. That's neat. I like that. Snack culture. All right, and what about culture. So obesity, about chocolate, snack culture. <laughs> right, so there's a theme developing. This is about their attitudes and understanding more of the issues our behind snack culture. Our yeah, values issues and, and what's it. actually going on in the food, yeah. I suspect. Well, it's a nice tactic. In that quick time we looked at this little newspaper article, what do you think it was saying? It's kind of telling you about how... Um, how the foods are taking over people's lives and people getting too unhealthy. Very, very good. So... I went down to the burger place on the weekend and I bought myself a burger, right? Now, this is fresh from Saturday. Never mind. And even better than this, fresh veggie burger from the canteen, fresh from Friday. How good is this going to be? Yeah? And what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at what's in one of these fantastic... Veggie burger. I think that's a really nice kind of relationship between the activity that they're going to be doing and the real lifeness of, you know, these are things which, uh, which come from their environment. So you're going to work as a team, if you like, to find out if the burgers contain fat and salt. And he's now trying to bring in some, some kind of idea of a scientific method as well. So how is he going to bring these two together? What is he going to make of these two ideas? The scientific method and the cultural context of food, healthy eating, obesity, all the things that he's around. I love the gherkin. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah? Now... So that's real personalised, isn't it? Is that in my veggie burger, I've got no gherkin. So what have we got to do if we're going to accurately compare these burgers. Take out the gherkin. Right, now it breaks my heart to do this, but I'm going to kind of get all this stuff out, yeah? So there's a nod towards scientific accuracy here, though how accurate it is just to scrape out the gherkin, I don't know. But the whole point of what he's doing is that he's moving them on to establishing the laboratory conditions. He's trying to establish equivalence. Yeah, and, well, and, that's, that's and what that's I... that's a that's... very scientific procedure and process yes, that he's, he's engaging them in thinking It is about. a scientific procedure, yeah, but he's, I mean, it's not terrible. Scientific. Are you concerned that there's issues to I'm, do I'm with measurements I'm not here. concerned about it. Just scraping off the gherkin isn't going to make them equivalent, but it's a nod towards it, so it's getting the idea into their head, and that's what's important about this. Malcolm fast-forwards to the practical. How precise will Dave's class be? Would he favour precision over process? He's got them all on task. And he's got a step to the task, hasn't he? Because this step is about grinding things up and preparing um, something that they can filter 
and he's, he's indicated where they're going in the sense that we've got some tests later. So that's a kind of, um, not just a target, but a kind of sense of what is going to happen yeah. next. He's got a, a process that he's thinking through and he's organising them in line yeah. with that process and that's good teaching. Separate the bun and the burger. What have you done, Justine? You could have told me that before. Whenever there's a glitch, he seems to be there. It's not going to kill me, is it, eh? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, your fear in science is that somebody comes over your shoulder and says, oh, you've got it wrong. Yeah. You've done it wrong, you've got to start again, you know. Yeah. Put some more water in. This enabling approach is so much more facilitating, isn't it? Just like that, all right? And it's about go. that that technique of just giving them just enough help before you go away. He's clearly got in his head when I need to intervene physically yeah, yeah. and when I need to prompt Absolutely. verbally. Absolutely, um, and, and prompt with his actions Nothing as well. Nothing in water, Rob, yeah? yeah? Okay, probably a bit more in there, I should think. Need to make it fairly soupy, all right? I'm interested in the water here. Has it actually been established how much water they do need? Again, it's this slight fuzziness around the method which I think is, is almost deliberate. Just chuck a bit more water in. How scientific is that? A bit more water, a bit more water. Make sure you tell Stefan. He seems to be now really engaged in getting the method going, in, in making yeah. certain that they're developing, you know, this kind of nice slushy He's solution like that they can filter. the Jamie Oliver science teacher, isn't he? Oh, yeah, just throw a bit of that in, throw a bit more of that in, rather than the Delia Smith of cooking. Do you see what I mean? You know, so she would be absolutely accurate. You always bake um, the same cake with Delia. You always get the same result yeah. at the end. So if you're going to be that kind of teacher, you know, you're going to, you're going to be passing on of strong ideas about how you measure, how you're careful about your results, how you measure accurately, how you record accurately. The, the Jamie Oliver approach has the advantage here of getting everyone included, of not making anyone fearful of doing science. And for a year nine group, I think that works very well. I think that's a really nice distinction. I always actually quite like the way how that Jamie Oliver manages. You know, I think that I think oh, that I he like does have that man. kind of slightly cavalier <laughs> attitude with measurement. But on the other hand, you, you're absolutely certain that he's got a really good process yeah. and that he knows the boundaries within which yeah, he's operating. Yeah, so and I get the same notion a, from him. I and mean, if somebody yeah. like stuck the test tube underneath the um, tap and turned it on and it just flowed over, then I'm I'm sure that he would intervene and say that's too much. So he's got he's got he's got his tolerance if we want to use a, um, a yeah. scientific term. Yeah. Okay. Shall we continue? Yeah. Right. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, if we haven't all got to that point, that's fine. Okay. I think we've got enough between us. That's okay. No problem. Right. You've got to do the test next. Right, so next phase. This is a big phase shift, isn't it? This is coming into the tests, and he's back to demonstration mode. Emulsion. So that's easy. Really easy watching, aren't they? All looking. Yeah. On your bread and your burger, OK? Now then, the second test is a salt test. So I'm very, very quickly... There's Nothing to do with accuracy, mind, is there? there? A bit too Quite much a lot. salt. And a lot of salt. Shake it a lot up. Of salt they're going. Right. I've put far too much salt. Yeah, he can't get it to dissolve, can he? Ah, oh, too much. Let's try that again. And I think this is really good, you see, because this, again, is representing okay. the reality of the process, yeah. isn't it? You know, he's put far too much salt in, he goes and sorts it out, he realises it. That's what we do as learners, yeah? So, So you know, it gives them licence to make similar mistakes, to stop, to start, to try again, um, without feeling bad about it. In the yeah, way. brilliant. I mean, absolutely brilliant. Sasha scrolls on. Scanning for examples of trial and error learning. Yeah. Okay, half, 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 half. It's all right. Okay, wicked. Right. Oh, a big one, big squirt. Fantastic. Right now, give it. Now give it the shake. Go on. That's it. OK, just put all the apparatus down on the table for me, please. Eyes on me, please. Eyes on me. OK. Right. On the boards, I want you to write down what your group has found out. Malcolm runs on to the conclusions. What has the experiment actually proved? 
David, please get your fingers out of the way. We found out that the veggie burger has more fat than the hamburger. And a couple from here, we learned that there is salt and fat in both veggie and beef burgers. And there's a big picture. Show us your, show us your picture. There's a load that he could be doing with these responses, actually. Oh, he's moved on. OK, pens down on the... Uh, right, so that evidence and all of that display of evidence has actually just been stopped there and then. There's well, no see. interrelationship with them. Well, let's see what happens. Good. OK, next lesson. You've told me about two things today. Two things. This is like his objectives coming in again. Burgers and what's in it. Wednesday's lesson is going to pick up on that. OK? And what I'm really, really interested in is how important is it that these things got fat and salt in it? And is it good or is it bad? OK? And did we really find out how much ah. fat? Or did we just find out it had fat? Can we just yeah, pause, pause it, there. it there? I mean, I just wonder why doesn't he immediately, if he knows that the test didn't, um, didn't show which had more or which had less, why doesn't he address that now? What's happening to me is that he's trying to make a bridge into the next lesson. He's trying to value what they've done so mm -hmm. far. He's also clear that this is a lesson which is part of a double lesson, if you like, so mm -hmm. it's halfway through a process. Mm -hmm. Maybe what he's going to suggest is that the next lesson is where they have to be more critical about the method, about what they've mm -hmm. done, in which case that's a quite a good yeah. learning point. Last thought with you. OK, we didn't quite get to this. Jamie Oliver, right? He's done a lot of work, as you probably know, on school dinners, OK? Thought to leave you with. Was Jamie Oliver right to do what he did? Was Jamie Oliver right? So he, put, he put my health and stuff in and then... Just they really want to discuss this, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Even though well, the bell has gone. That's a discussion we can have. Happy to have that's that discussion. That's a discussion we can, we can have, have neat. Okay? That's nice. All right. You've been absolutely fantastic, everybody. Can you just pause? What's really commendable and really motivating about the way in which he ends this lesson is that the pupils go out of the science classroom with reasons to think about what they've been doing within the science classroom in their everyday lives. And I think any teacher would be proud of the idea that children walk out into the wider world still thinking about the issues that they've engaged with. I guess in the and what of the pros and cons of the Delia Jamie teaching methods? Like Dave's class, Sasha and Malcolm's debate continues long after the bell. I suppose it would depend if you if you were moving up the school, say if this was a year eleven class or yeah. A level, you would have to be moving to a much more formal style of science, perhaps, or a form, formal measurement. Yes. Yeah, but in, in yeah. this case, with year nine, he can afford to be a bit looser. Yeah, this is more opinion. It is coming back to the notion of being able to talk about what you're doing and think through the process and have an opinion at the end of it. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm.